Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. I'd like to say hello to Jack Adams from Lincoln, Nebraska. Hello to Claire, who is seven, and Cohen, who is five, for suggesting we write a story about a dog and a cat, which we did with our story about Yuki and Koro. And hello to Hope Elizabeth, who is six years old, and her big sister, Kath, from England. I'd like to say a happy belated birthday to Francesca, who had a birthday April 10th. Happy belated birthday to Violet Rose Pullen, who turned seven on April 21st and lives in Tiptree, England. Happy belated birthday to Emmy, who turned seven on May 6th. Happy birthday to Magnolia, who lives in Pittsburgh and is turning five around May 10th. Happy birthday to Ava, who will be turning eight on May 13th. And happy birthday to Connie, whose birthday is May 15th. Happy birthday, Connie, from Mommy and Daddy, and hello to Connie's little brother, Theo. Happy birthday to you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. Shoutouts and birthday wishes are one way we give thanks to our supporters. If you would like to support us and receive more bedtime entertainment like this, all ad-free, please visit our support page at sleeptightstories.org slash support. Thank you. Thank you to Lala Malloy, Addie, and Avery for suggesting a story that included a mermaid. In this story, Billy is bored, and his mom decides he should go out for a walk. She asks his sister Jessica to take him, and they head to their favorite place, the beach. But they could never imagine what will happen when they get there. A mermaid visits Surrey. It's the weekend, and Billy is bored. Bored, bored, bored. He keeps repeating as he walks around his house. So bored that he is starting to think about playing with one of the potatoes that his mom is cleaning. So bored that he doesn't know what to do. Mom, I'm bored. Bored, 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 bored. There is nothing to do, Billy said as he walked into the kitchen and paced back and forth. Well, why don't you go clean your room? Billy's mom said. Mom, I'm not that bored. It's good to be bored, Billy. You can't be doing stuff all the time. You just finished a season of hockey and everyone needs a rest. Especially me, she thought. How can being bored possibly be good? It hurts my brain. And you don't want my brain to hurt, do you? No, Billy, I don't want your brain to hurt. Soccer practices will start soon and you will be busy again. Why don't you use this time to find something new to do? Like what? He said, raising his arms in the air while walking in circles around the kitchen. Mm, You could draw some pictures. Nah, I'm not artistically inclined. You could read a book. Did that already. It was all about the monsters of the deep. You could ride your bike. Grandpa hasn't fixed it yet. I don't know then, sweetie. I guess you just need to use your imagination. I could hang out here in the kitchen with you and play with the potatoes, I guess. Billy said as he was trying to do pirouettes. Mmm. Jessica, 
Could you take Billy out for a walk along the beach, please? Yelled Billy's mom. Jessica was Billy's older sister, and they lived in Surrey, a small town on the eastern tip of an island on Canada's Atlantic coast. Both Jessica and Billy went to the same school, the only English school, and generally got along as well as most brothers and sisters, except when they argued over who made the most mess in the bathroom or when both had something really important to do on the computer at the very same time. Being such a small town, everyone knew everyone else either by their first name or by their relationship to their mother or father. Good morning, Jessica, said Mr. McDonald, their next door neighbor. Keeping Billy out of trouble again, I see. Good morning, Mr. McDonald. It's not an easy job, Jessica said as she was pulling Billy along, down the main street toward one of the many beautiful beaches that surrounded their small town. There's Mrs. Macaulay's dog, Luce, again, said Jessica, as they were turning the corner to walk down the last stretch of road before they got to their favorite part of the beach. That dog always tries to bite me, Billy said. You should stop whistling at him each time you walk by, and then perhaps he wouldn't get so angry with you, Jessica replied. Maybe, Billy said, not very convinced. When they arrived on the beach, the tide was out, which meant they could walk out further from the shoreline. The water was still far too cold to swim. Jessica and Billy took off their sneakers started walking past the white sand onto the red mud and out towards the log they always sat on that was farther out from the shore. Hey, be careful. I don't want mud all over my jeans, Jessica said. Oops, sorry, Billy said. I didn't mean to jump in that mud. Yeah, right. How come we aren't combing for beach glass today, Billy asked. Many locals and visitors to the area love to walk on the beach looking for broken glass to use in all kinds of crafts. I'm not in the mood. I was quite happy to read all morning until you started to get so bored that I had to take you outside for a walk, Jessica said, pretending that Billy was bothersome. Well, it's not like anyone forced you to. Billy said with a disappointed tone. Anyway, don't worry about it. It's a beautiful day to spend some time along the shore. Maybe we can look for glass a bit later. As they got closer to the log, they noticed something laying beside it. What's that beside the log? Billy asked. I don't know. If it's a seal, don't go whistling at it or try to pet it. It might be hungry and think you are its breakfast, Jessica said somewhat seriously. I don't think that's a seal, Billy said as they slowed their pace to a stop. Or a dolphin, or a whale. Is this some kind of joke? Jessica said, not believing what she was seeing. It can't be what I think it is. Can't be. You stay here while I go check. Jessica said. Jessica slowly walked to the log and stopped, and Billy, following closely and not looking where he was going, walked right into her. I thought I told you to stay back there, she said to Billy. Hi, my name is Shelly, a voice said from behind the log. Billy started jumping up and down with joy. Are you really what I think you are? Billy, calm down, Jessica said, looking away from the voice to notice all the mud on her jeans. Um, hi, I'm Jessica, and this is my little brother, Billy. Uh, that's a really nice costume you are wearing, Jessica said, looking at Shelly's sky-blue tail and seaweed top, 
which she thought must function as a shirt. I take it you're not from around here? Are you lost? Do you need help? Are you really a mermaid? Billy asked, trying hard to contain his excitement. The only girl I know who has green hair like you is my art teacher, and she doesn't have a tail. Billy, there is no such thing as mermaids, Jessica said as she punched his shoulder. Oh, but I am a mermaid, though we don't use that term. And I'm not lost, not really anyway. I come from a place far, far away from here, she said, pointing southward. Okay, Jessica said, rubbing her eyes in disbelief. So what brings you to Surrey? Are you from Nova Scotia? asked Billy. I come from an underwater kingdom far, far south from here. I recently celebrated my 15th birthday, and like all my sisters before me, I am permitted to go on a long journey to the surface to catch a glimpse of the world above. I have been traveling for many of your days and nights and visited many places along the way. This is my last stop on my journey before I return to tell my family of all that I have seen. That is so cool, said Billy. I want to see the whole world when I grow up. Would you like to come to my house and see my Lego collection or... Billy, Jessica interrupted. I'm sure Shelley doesn't want to see your collection of Legos. Billy looked disappointed. Actually, I would like to go for a walk and maybe taste some of your local delicacies. Local delicacies? Billy chuckled. Uh, I guess you could try Tim Hortons. I go there for chocolate milk after hockey. Tim Hortons sounds like a wonderful place. Can you take me there? Uh, right. I don't think I could recommend you go walking down Main Street dressed like that. Jessica said, still not believing what she was seeing. Billy, why don't you run to the house and grab my sweatshirt and sweatpants from my room for Shelly to wear? Hey, why do I have to go? Don't you always say you are the fastest runner? Billy didn't like that his words were being used against him, but he ran as fast as he could toward their house to get Shelly some clothes to wear. It must be fun to have a little brother. I have five older sisters, and it's not so fun, Shelly said as she watched Billy run off in the distance. I'm not so sure I would call it fun, but he has his moments. Can you tell me a little bit about your town? To be honest, I hadn't planned on coming this far north, but I don't think anybody in the kingdom has visited this place before, so it will make for some good stories to tell. Tell you about Surrey? Jessica said with a smirk. I don't think there's much to say. I go to school and work part-time at the local grocery. Everyone's parents either fish, work on a farm, or have some small business for the visitors that come in the summer. Not much goes on here in this small place. We do have some great beaches, and it can be nice to grow up with the same friends. But it's your home, right? It's home. Just then, Billy came running towards them all out of breath. I think I just broke my record, he said. Maybe even a world record. Mmm, here is something for you to wear so you know... You can feel more like a local and not have too many people staring at you. Though they will stare anyway, since you are a stranger, and likely be the subject of many conversations, Jessica thought. Thank you. These look very comfortable, she said. Do you both mind turning around for just a moment? Oh yeah, of course, Jessica said, as she punched Billy in the arm because he wasn't moving and was still staring at Shelley. Shall we be off to taste some of your local delicacies at the Tim Hortons you mentioned? Shelley said, 
magically transformed after putting on Jessica's clothes into what would pass for any girl her age. Wow, you sure you aren't related to my art teacher? You look just like her, Billy said. Jessica and Billy take Shelly from their spot on the beach towards Main Street, where they walk past a number of small shops. Shelly would stop and look in the windows and sometimes wave at the people who would be slowly driving by. It was so much fun that Billy started looking in the windows and waving too. I feel like we are on a float in the Gold Cup Parade, Billy said. They arrived at Tim Hortons and Jessica and Shelly took a seat. Billy insisted on ordering the delicacies, using Shelly's money, of course. Okay, so here is a selection of my favorites, Billy said as he brought over a tray containing far too many sweets. First, I got you some chocolate milk, a chocolate dip donut, a honey cruller, and a Canadian maple donut, since you are a visitor. And what's in the box? Shelley asked. That's a box of assorted Timbits, in case you want to take it with you and share it with your family. Billy, I don't think Timbits can go underwater, Jessica whispered. Right. Well, I guess we could all share, since I haven't had anything to eat in almost two hours, Billy said, opening the box of Timbits. Wow, Shelley said, these look so amazing. Thank you very much for sharing these treats with me. I really like the Canadian maple one mixed with chocolate milk. Shelley said as she dipped the donut into her drink and took a big bite. For the next couple of hours, they sat and ate donuts, drank chocolate milk, and talked about all the things that interested them. Billy shared everything he knew about Legos and all the different Lego sets he had. Jessica talked about school, books, and her friends. Shelly talked about her family, the beauty of the underwater kingdom, and the kinds of activities that her and her friends enjoyed doing. They discovered that despite their obvious differences, they were much the same. And if Shelley didn't have to leave, they would probably become friends. As they were walking down Main Street towards the beach and the spot they met, Shelley said, I want to thank you both for sharing some local delicacies with me and for all the conversation. This is a visit I will never forget. It was nice to meet you. Are you sure you have to go? Jessica asked. You haven't even seen my Lego collection yet, Billy said. Yes, I must return. And while Surrey looks like a lovely place, my home is under the sea with my family. This has been my favorite of all the places I have visited because I now have made two new friends. You are welcome to come and visit any time, Jessica said. The winter is a bit cold though. You might want to come again in summer so we can go bridge jumping and swimming at Basin Head Beach, Billy said. That sounds like a lot of fun. Would you mind turning around for just a moment? Shelley asked. Uh, sure, of course, Jessica said, checking that Billy was actually turning around. They heard a small splash and turned around to see Jessica's clothes folded neatly on the beach and Shelly swimming out in the water. Shelly turned around to wave and said, thank you for everything. I hope to meet you again someday. Jessica and Billy waved and said, come back soon. And that's the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight.